In this video, we're going to be introducing a new operation on functions known as Dirichlet convolution. So what is this new operation? What have we done before? We've taken products and multiplied them together. This gives us a new function. So it's an operation on functions. It takes two functions, f of x, g of x, and it creates a new function, f times g, which is just the product, f of x times g of x. Or we can take sums and differences. We can even compose functions. And these are all operations on functions, given two functions, f and g. This is some manner of creating a new function, f times g, f plus g, f minus g, or f composed with g. We're now going to introduce a new operation. If f and g are two arithmetic functions, so functions whose domain is the positive integers and whose codomain is either real numbers or uh, integers, then the Dirichlet convolution is a new arithmetic function given by this formula here. We use this star. This is different from multiplication and it's different from function composition. We're going to use this symbol to represent Dirichlet convolution, f star g of n is a sum over all the positive divisors of n. So for every positive integer that is a factor of n, you compute f of the divisor and then g of n divided by that divisor. So to determine the value of f star g for some number n, first you have to determine all the positive factors of n and their corresponding, what I will call a cofactor, d over n. Then you compute the product f of a factor, g of a cofactor and then sum up all of those products. So let's take a look at an example to get our heads wrapped around this new operation. Let f of n be the arithmetic function at 2n plus 1 and g of n be n squared minus 1. Let's compute the value f star g of 10 in particular. So first we have to determine all the factors of 10 and they're 1, 2, 5, and 10, the positive factors specifically. For each factor, we compute the value f of that factor and g of the cofactor. Then we're going to take that product. So the factors are 1, 2, 5, and 10. f of n is 2n plus 1. So for those factors, we get 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3, 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5, 2 times 5 plus 1 is 11, and 2 times 10 plus 1 is 21. Now the cofactor is going to be 10 over the divisor. So 10 over 1 is 10. 10 over 2 is 5, uh, 10 over 5 is 2, and 10 over 10 is 1. I would simply point out that you're just taking pairs of numbers that multiply to 10. 1 and 10, 2 and 5, 5 and 2, 10 and 1. For each of these cofactors, we compute g of that. Okay, so g of the cofactor will be that number squared minus 1. So 10 squared minus 1 is 99. 5 squared minus 1 is 24, 2 squared minus 1 is 3, and 1 squared minus 1 is 0. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take the product elements of this column with elements of that one. So f of d times g of 10 over d. Uh, 3 times 99 is 297. 5 times 24 is 120. 11 times 3 is 33. And 21 times 0 is 0. So there we have it, we've computed all the values f of d, g of 10 over d, where d ranges over all the positive factors of 10. And next, all we have to do is add all of them up for a result of 450. So we've computed that f star g of 10 is 450. What you shouldn't necessarily expect, by the way, is a nice simple formula that you will then plug uh, numbers into later. For each number, you may have to compute this using this lengthy technique. Let's take a look at another example. f of n is 1 for every n. Compute the value f star tau of 20, where tau is the number of positive divisors function. So we determine all the positive factors of 20, and there they are, 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20. For each factor, we compute the value of several different things, f of the factor, tau of the cofactor, and then the product, f of d times tau of 20 over d. So let's go ahead and fill in this table here. Our factors are 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, and 20, with cofactors 20, 10, 5, 4, 2, and 1. f of n is just 1, regardless of what we plug in. Tau, however, is the number of positive factors. So the number of positive factors of 20 is 6. We just computed them. The positive factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. There were four of them. The positive factors of 5 are 1 and 5, and there are two of them. The factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. That's three of them. 
The positive factors of 2 are 1 and 2, so there were 2 in total. And the positive factors of 1 are just 1, so there was only a single positive factor. Next, we take the product, f of d times tau of 20 over d. Of course, f of d is always 1, so this is just exactly the same as the previous column. Well, with that in hand, we just have to sum them up. 6 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1 is 18. So, lo and behold, f star tau of 20 is 18. Now we're going to take a look at a bit more challenging of an example. Let's compute the value of mu star tau of p to the k. Mu is that Mobius function, tau is the number of positive factors function, and p is a general prime number, we don't specify which one, and k is any power of it. Well, the positive factors of p to the k are fairly easy to list out. This is a nice convenience. They're simply 1, p, p squared, p cubed, all the way up to p to the k. The corresponding cofactors would be p to the k over that number. So p to the k over 1 would just be p to the k. p to the k over p is p to the k minus 1. We simply count down powers until we get to p and 1 and finish there. So we can go ahead and fill in this table. So my factors are 1, p, p squared, and so forth, finishing at p to the k. So right before that would be p to the k minus 1 and p to the k minus 2. I want to point out not all of these rows might exist. For example, if k is only equal to 1, then the only rows that exist are these two right here. So tau of p to the k is the number of positive factors. There's a single positive factor of 1. There are two positive factors of a prime. For a prime squared, it's 1 p and p squared, it's 3. Remember, tau of a prime power is simply the power plus 1. The corresponding cofactors count down the powers of p. Now mu of these numbers is pretty nice because remember mu of 1 is 1 we're going to go up from the bottom mu of a prime is negative 1 but mu of any higher power of a prime are all going to be zeros because all of these high powers of prime numbers have a square that can be factored out p squared in particular now when i take the product a lot of them turn out to be zero because of the mu function and here i get negative k and here i simply get k plus 1 and now all I have to do is add up the last column, and that's pretty straightforward. No matter what, mu star tau of p to the k is equal to 1. So it actually did not matter what the prime was or what the exponent was. I mentioned earlier that if k is only equal to 2, only the first two rows exist. But in that case, these cofactors would have been p and 1 respectively, and so these values would have shown up in the first two rows here. So you can check that it actually does not matter if k is 0, 1, or 2, or anything larger. You're always going to have these two products show up as your only two relevant values. They will always add together to give you 1. So mu star tau of any prime power is always 1, so even though mu and tau individually might behave kind of unpredictably, their Dirichlet convolution is a very, very simple function. Now let's take a look at one more example. Suppose f of n is a multiplicative function, and all I know about it is that for any prime and any positive power of that prime, f of p to the k is p minus k. Let g of n be the number of prime digits in n. So if you write the number n in base 10 and look at the digits, ask how many of those digits are prime numbers. Remember that 1 is not a prime number. Compute the value f star g of 30. So f and g are both unusual functions, possibly unlike you've ever worked with before, but still we'll, we'll hack through it. The first thing to do, as always, is find the positive factors of the number that we're trying to plug in. The positive factors of 30 are 1 with cofactor 30. I happen to have already made this table have exactly the number of rows necessary. Uh, I can also do 2 times 15 or 15 times 2, 3 times 10 or 10 times 3, 5 times 6 or 6 times 5. Okay, now I'm going to compute f. So f is a multiplicative function that is not constantly zero. So f of 1 
has to be 1. f of 2 to the first, well, that's a prime power. So how do I compute the value of f? I take the prime and I subtract the power. So the prime is 2, the power is 1. 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. This is also a prime power, so I do the prime minus the power, and I get out 2. 5 is a prime, so I compute the prime minus the power, and I get out 4. Now, 6 is not a prime number, so how am I going to apply f? Well, f was given to be multiplicative, so 6 can be factored as the relatively prime product 2 and 3. So since f was given to us to be multiplicative, f of 6 must be the same thing as f of 2 times f of 3 f of 2 was equal to 1, and f of 3 was equal to 2, so therefore f of 6 is equal to 2. Similarly, 10 can be written as the relatively prime product 2 times 5, so since f is multiplicative, f of 10 must be f of 2 times f of 5, 1 times 4, that's 4. 15 can be factored as the prime uh, product 3 times 5, so I get f of 3, which is 2, times f of 5, which is 4, 2 times 4 is 8. 30 can be represented as the relatively prime product 2 times 3 times 5. And since f is multiplicative, f of 30 is going to be f of 2 times f of 3 times f of 5. 1 times 2 times 4, 8. Now let's take a look at the function g. All of our numbers are written in base 10, because that's just how we typically write them. So I look at the cofactor and I ask, how many of the digits are prime? In 30, the two digits are 3 and 0. 3 is a prime number, so there was one prime digit. 5 is a prime number, but 1 is not. This has no prime digits. This has no prime digits. This has 1, this has 1, this has 1, and this has none. Okay, 6 is not a prime number. 5, 3, and 2 are, but 1 is not. Now I can take the product, f of d, which is given in this column over here, times g of 30 over d, which is given in this column. A few of them uh, pop right out because multiplying by zero, that's easy. Otherwise, I'm just going to fill it in with what was given as the value of f. And then finally, I simply need to sum these up. 1 plus 1, 0, 0, 2, 4, 8, and 0 add up to 16. So the Dirichlet convolution f star g, where f is this function, which is multiplicative, and f of a prime power is the prime minus the power. And g of n is the number of prime digits in the base 10 notation way of representing the number n. If f and g are those functions, the Dirichlet convolution f star g of 30 is 16. So that's Dirichlet convolution and working through a few examples. Notice we never really brought up what this has to do with multiplicative or completely multiplicative functions. That will be in the next video.